I'm Henry Fitzherbert, journalist and broadcaster, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here with the legendary Greek actress Nonica Galinea, whose extraordinary career has spanned 50 years on the stage in Athens and elsewhere, especially here in London. Welcome, Nonica. Thank you very much for being with me today. I'd like to ask you, first of all, about your time in London, because here we are, and this is a part of the world which means a great deal to you. You've performed here, you have great friendships here. Is it true to say that in some ways you feel half British? I do. Although um, I have to add that in spite of being half British, I adore my country. And not for a minute have I stopped feeling that I am Greek. And I love Greece with all my heart and I'm very proud of my country and for being Greek. Yes. But uh, the fact that half of my life has been spent here, and actually I started from a school before I went to the drama school. I went to an English school in Switzerland, and I have my Oxford school certificate. <laughs> so, um, Yes, of course, it's, it's impossible not to feel half British yes. because even my character was influenced yes. by the way the English people think and react yes. and the, by their integrity. And I hope that I am very much like them. And it was in London that you studied at the renowned Weber Douglas Drama School after attending Secretarial College. For a young woman who had dreamt of being an actress since she was five years old, this must have been a huge moment for you. It was the happiest moment of my life when I heard the directors, after I made the, the, the speech of Shakespeare, Lady Anne <laughs> of Richard III, and I heard them say, yes, she's got it. It's okay. And I had only said a few sentences. I mean, they didn't wait for me to say the whole speech. I got in right away. I can't tell you, I, I could cry. And in those days, it can't have been easy for a young woman to pursue a career on the stage or any career and, and you were expected to get married and have children, presumably. Well, everybody else expected that yes. from me. And I think I made a mess of it because when I finished uh, the drama school, um, at the same time, love came along and there was a very good looking uh, uh, Greek um, ship owner that really came after me and I fell in love with him. And he persuaded me that we had to get married and I, I, I got ready for that in spite of the fact that the director of the school told me, don't go away, um, you'll come uh, with us and we'll go on a tour. And it broke my heart that I had to split into two because I didn't really want to get married, but it was just the fact that I was in love. And uh, I had to leave school and I had to prepare myself to get married to this man. And while he was with me, he was preparing another marriage with actually uh, a relative of his, because in the ship owners' families mm. uh, at that time, I don't know about now because I have no idea, mm. but at that time it was very the thing to do, to marry uh, between cousins so that the money wouldn't split away. So he married somebody else and I, I, I thought I was going mad because I had lost that chance mm of doing what I really wanted to do. And so I went to a psychiatrist. Mm. Um, I didn't know anybody in Greece because I was away for so many years. And so my friends told me, uh, we will um, 
take you to a psychiatrist who is a very, very good looking man. In fact, he, he was supposed to be the best looking man in Athens. But for God's sake, don't fall in love with him because uh, all the women fall in love with him and uh, he just throws them out. So uh, just because they told me that, I did not fall in love with him, but he fell in love with me. And he asked me to marry him, and he was going to Paris uh, to work in the two wonderful, he was a psychiatrist, mm. um, um, at Saint Anne and Salpetria. And it, it was a wonderful life before me. And it was the only way that could actually make me feel that um, all the uh, terrible things that had happened to me uh, came out to be for a good reason, because I was beginning a new life in Paris. And I had three children with this man. He was a bright, very good looking, great personality person. And obviously we had a rouse and... <laughs> but you hadn't was... yet given up on your dreams. No, 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 I never gave up mm. on my dreams. He took me to the theater very often mm. and I used to faint in the theater so much. I had the urge of doing what I really wanted to do. And he helped me very much. So after five years in Paris and having children, you returned to Greece and joined the Theater of Arts That's as a right. director, Carolos Kuhn. Yes. Did you ever imagine this would be the start of a remarkable 50-year career on the stage? Absolutely not. I had no idea. And, uh, well, of course, I had some things that made me think that uh, something would mean something. I mean, when I went to say whatever I was going to say in order to pass my exam, again... After I said two sentences, he said to me, OK, you're in. So I didn't even finish what I had studied to say. Well, that, of course, gave me a hope that yeah. perhaps there was something. Yes. Uh, you never got me. to finish your auditions. No, no, no. Just a, a few, a couple of sentences. That was all. Yeah. And then the fact that um, in spite in spite of being in his school, he didn't leave me in the school. He took me with him um, at rehearsals. Uh, he was doing The Birds of Aristophanes, and he was going on a huge tour in... Um, we started from London at the Aldwych Theatre. Uh, it was magic. He, he, he put me in another world. I didn't belong to anybody anymore. I didn't belong to my husband or to my children. I was trapped, but in a way that I wanted to be trapped. Yes. I, I knew that I belonged in that world, yes. and that world was the only real meaning of my life. How awful for my children, because I love them terribly. But uh, I have to be honest and say how I felt. Yes. And uh, yes, we came to Aldwych and... Um, and you performed for some very distinguished guests, including yes, the royal family. The royal family was there and... Um, who, who from the royal family was there? Princess Margaret. Yes. And um, Sir Tony Armstrong-Jones and um, Princess um, Marina of Kent. I'm not sure about the others because um, I remember Peggy Ashcroft and Peter O'Toole. They all came to see you? Yes, and we, actually we, there were two, uh, there was a very big reception because it, there was somebody terribly important at the time who organized all this. His name was Peter Daubney. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where we met all the actors afterwards and spoke with them, etc. And there was also a dinner party at the Greek embassy where I had the the privilege of sitting next to Tony Armstrong-Jones. And is he a bit of a rascal? Uh, he was marvellous. He was so charming. And 
we we spoke about Greece actually. He mm. was crazy about either of the, the island. And Princess Margaret was so beautiful with a lovely uh, yellow evening dress. And uh, I don't think she enjoyed very much the fact that we had such a lovely time. <laughs> we'll read between the lines. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, that was London yes. for me. But th just jumping forwards, um, and then we'll go back, but that, that wasn't your only contact with the royal family because many years later you were invited to dinner at Kensington Palace by Princess Diana, I believe, um, after her divorce from Prince Charles. Yes, we had... Um, common friend and so I met her we went to uh, see a ballet together first at the Royal Opera House and then I was invited at Kensington Palace she she was not with Prince Charles anymore and she gave a very big dinner party I, I was crazy about her how could you not be crazy about her she was so beautiful and so shy kind and kind and unique i can't say another word for her she she is unique and she still is unique nobody ever since these 20 years has not been born that could be like her no she she has kept uh the title of the uh, uh, people's prince, uh, yes. princess, and she has kept the word unique, which is for her. The defining partnership of your life, professionally and personally, was with the legendary actor Alekos Alexandrakis, yes. um, with whom you set up and ran the famous Elysia Theatre for 25 years. Can you tell us how you first met? Yes. Um, he was the top uh, actor and extremely good looking and I always say things about looks because um, beauty uh, plays a very big part uh, in me and uh, you know I'm I'm in love with beauty really and when we got together uh, we, we were in the same play uh, it was a patriotic play, and he was playing a, a great poet, uh, Solomos, and I was playing the, the um, Countess Solomos. Um, he was married, and he had uh, a child, and um, I thought, you know, I had just divorced, and um, I thought, oh, no, no, I mustn't. I mustn't let myself go, but it was too strong. And the fact that he also fell in love with me. So an instant, an instant chemistry, would you it say? It was an instant chemistry, but we kept it from ourselves. We didn't want to admit it for a couple of months or so. And then it was just a, a passion, a real passion. And thank God for that, because we were terribly happy for very many years and uh, the theater really brought us even more together mm -hmm. and we had this passion for for our work and it was a wonderful life because one play was coming after the other and we, we were terribly excited Intense. about the whole thing and we were creating and people loved us together and we never quarreled only on the stage on the stage we we would die. Yes. <laughs> Like the Burton and Taylor of Greece. Yes, yes. Well, well, you're saying... Well, I mean, and you've <laughs> thank said, you for that. But it's true. I will accept it, it's though, true. because it's, it's so wonderful that uh, uh, I will not say no. <laughs> and you've said Alekos is the man who made you. What did you he mean did, by that? He did. He was extremely um, wise mm. and he had, um, he, he was an actor for very many years. So he had a great experience and he, he was terribly serious about his work mm. and he, he was very strict with me on the stage, mm. Mm. but he was so kind that he even said to me, maybe I shouldn't say that, but he did say it so many times. 
He said, I'm so strict with you mm. and I will never let you do play with your facilities mm. because you are a better actress than I am. Wow. Well, that's honest, right. honest of him to say that. That was very honest and mm. I'm very grateful to him and I will always love him because he's not with us anymore. Yes. He left us. Um, what would you say were the creative high points of your collaboration with Elekos? Anything that really stands well, out? Well, it was a great, great life through our plays. Yes. We did wonderful plays. We played... Well, <laughs> I don't know Too where many. to start from. Yes. Um, um, well, Tennessee Williams and uh, Albee and O'Neill mm. and um, all the great uh, things that actors want to play and uh, uh, the visit of Durenmatt and uh, uh, people loved us together. And did you uh, also off stage sort of feel like you were in some way owned by the by the by the Greek public? Did you feel you had to sort of perform off stage as well as on for them for your fans? No, I was always myself. Mm. No, I didn't have to do that. I didn't feel I had to do that. I think people want you to be real off stage. They have enough of that. Yes. Uh, and I had enough of it. In fact, um, it was about 20 years after very hard work and very big roles that I, have, I had a breakdown. And I was doing a long day journey in tonight at the time by O'Neill. And it was Stuart Burge who had come from London to direct it, and he was a wonderful director. He had even worked with Laurence Olivier. He was a wonderful person. We were great friends, and he did a wonderful performance of that play. But something terrible had happened to me at the time. Every time I went in my dressing room to get ready for the performance, I had a terrible, terrible headache. And I had to perform ill and obviously I felt that I wasn't as good as I should be. I wasn't given to my audience what I wanted to and I was desperate. Was it was, partly the character you were playing as well? Well, the character was a help because she is a very stress, frustrated woman and she um, it, it, it blended with my case, you know, uh, but um, I still didn't feel that I was good enough. Mm -hmm. And one evening, I was desperate. And in fact, um, in the part, there was a sentence that the actress was saying rather to herself and, and is, was not supposed to be heard by the audience. And so I said this sentence, I can't remember what it was, and I heard from the audience a very warm uh, voice of a man who gave a very slight laughter, not laughter, you know, something like, <laughs> something like that, that made me understand that he understood what I was saying. And I had a contact with that voice. And it changed my whole part of myself. And I didn't know, you know, I, I wanted to tell him that I got the message. So I started playing with my body not so much with the words I had to say, but with my body, which was, I have to admit, sexual. Mm. It was a sexual feeling that I was giving to someone whom I didn't know who he was. And when 
uh, we finished the, the performance and I went in my dressing room. I, I, I was in despair because I, I thought, if this man comes to say hello and say thank you for the performance or so, and maybe he's short and fat and bold and I don't know what, uh, all the magic that I had inside me and all this uh, uh, gift that I had from him uh, would vanish. So next day, I started doing the same thing because it was the only thing that could take away my my headache. You identified somebody in the audience to, yes, to perform Yes, I was always playing for the unknown yes. theatre goer. Would you would you look for somebody in specifically? In, Absolutely and, not. You no. don't look. Mm. No, when you are on the mm. stage, first of all, the lights mm. won't. Uh, allow you and you wouldn't recognize anybody but mm. no you you only focus on what you're doing on the stage mm. the audience is a different world right. altogether no no that was not it but it changed my whole um attitude and i was thankful and grateful to the unknown theater goer that allowed me to go through this terribly difficult part. And actually, I dare say. Um, One of your greatest performances. Yes, it was a yeah. success, mm. a personal success mm. of mine. So this stranger who had no idea he's, yeah. he's responsible yeah. for this, for yeah. unlocking the key to your very... And, and you've dubbed him the stranger in your, in your, in your, in the yes, way you tell the thank story. Thank God he didn't come. Yeah, we don't know who he is. Um, and and that's the way I start my book because yes. I, I yeah I don't know if you know that I did I, my autobiography, yes. and I, I, the first chapter is dedicated to the unknown theatre yeah. goer that made me help me go through a very difficult part of my life because of his unknown personality that I never got to know. It's a wonderful story. Um, you're unique amongst Greek actresses for working with so many renowned English directors, including Frank Hauser, who was the much respected... Frank Hauser, Hauser, Frank Hauser sorry. a great friend of mine. And he was, yes. And we did The Seagull, which was a great success. And Frank was always laughing. He was, uh, he had such a sense of humour that yes. he made us so happy. It was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, yes. And it, who else was it? Uh, Nancy Duguid, with mm. whom I did uh, a streetcar named Desire. And it was um, uh, Leon Rubin. We did uh, the visit of uh, Durenmat, and we did um, a Fedor, um, the lady from Maxim, which was a musical. Um, did you like working with English directors? Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. They were so near me. Mm. They. they there was a, a terrible contact with me and British people, always. Um, you just felt an affinity. Uh, yes, mm. I, I was terribly fond of them, and so were they. We were very close. And in 1979, you acted in Harold Pinter's The Homecoming in Athens, a very famous that production. That was um, Minos Volanakis, who also worked in England for many, yes. many years with great actresses like uh, Vanessa and Redgrave. He was the director. Um, a director, Rudolph. yes, yeah. and mm. he was a great friend of uh, Harold Pinter. And so we did the homecoming, and uh, Pinter came to see us in Greece. In fact, we had dinner together in one of the actors' house, um, a lovely house, Nikos Kurkulos. He was uh, wonderful in the play. Um, it was a wonderful performance, and... Um, I fell in love with the Pinter, and I, he's my favorite author, Chekhov mm. and Pinter. Mm. Uh, in, in England, he, ha he has quite a, um, a mixed reputation. A lot of people found him a, a quite 
difficult person to deal with on a personal level, but clearly you didn't. You, you... Well, I didn't know him so well, mm. uh, but uh, I liked the fact that he was difficult. Why should people be easy? Yeah. I don't see mm. that. I don't think it's very interesting. Mm. He had many reasons to mm. be difficult because what he produced was genius. Mm. So why not be difficult? <laughs> it's yes. his privilege. Yes. Anyway, we had dinner together and then he asked us to read a poem that he had just written for his father who had died. And I saw Pinta saying this poem and crying. And I will never, never, never forget him. What a moment. Say something. Yes. So did you continue uh, that friendship with Harold Pinter in London in, when you were over here? Well, I saw him for lunch once at Scott's. He usually went to Scott's for lunch. Mm. And he was very pleased to see me and uh, we spoke about the play and about my part and about his health. He was already very ill. And I said a lie. I said, I see that you look so well. And he did that. That's what he did. And then when I played in uh, Covent Garden, I called and he said he was too ill to come. And so the last time you saw him was at Scott's? Yeah. Yeah. And what year was that, roughly, do you think, Steve? Uh, 2002 or three. And going back to, to the Alicia, um, you not only acted and produced, but you translated 17 plays into Greek, I believe. How did you manage all those different responsibilities and challenges? I didn't. That's why I got ill. Mm. And uh, I went to many doctors because I, 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 I was knocked out and they all told me the same thing if you want to um, kill yourself why do you come to us <laughs> change your life but I couldn't change my life I mean performing in so many uh, demanding psychological dramas 55 can't have helped. plays yes I did 55 and 17 uh, translations and the book that I wrote twice because it was all consuming life. You, you gave your life to the theater. I gave my life and I'm so happy for that because my life is very small in comparison to what theater gave me. You're the only leading actress to have performed five times at the Athens Concert Hall yes. in many classic works, including St. Joan by Claudel and The Millionaireess by Bernard Shaw. Is there a particular performance that stands out for you there? Uh, there were huge performances, yes, but mm. I think Fedora, mm. which went also to Epidaurus, uh, was a, a, my greatest, um, dare I say, success. Mm. Um, and of course, it's a wonderful part because uh, she's terribly in love with uh, her stepson and um, she kills herself she commits suicide but she <sighs> prepares his death before she dies so it's a it's a tremendous play and um, it, there was it, it was a tremendous success I love it I love it your close relationship with England was celebrated in 2003 with a special performance and reception in Covent Garden, raising money for Doctors Without Borders, in which you acted alongside your daughter, Amalia Mutusi. Can you tell us about the event? Yes, I have to say that uh, it was Yanis Kokos, also an international director, yes. who did um, the direction of it and who was a great friend of ours. and. We were really very close and we were very happy with this uh, 
uh, with these two performances because we did uh, one uh, play of uh, Tensi Williams and one of Strindberg. My daughter was extremely good and um, the whole performance was really terribly, terribly successful and um, I don't know, um, Frances de la Tour, who was there. She wrote a letter. She wrote a letter and she used the word integrity. So uh, with her permission, I'm saying this word mm. and I think that says that says it all. And she was talking about the integrity of your performance. Yes. Yeah. Um, and of our acting. Mm. Yeah. I, it was, I think, the happiest moment of my career. The first happy m moment was at, at the drama school. Yes, Weber Douglas. And then the happiest moment of my whole career was when I played. And is that partly the acknowledgement you, you received from your peers, from your, your fellow actors? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's why it meant so much. It meant so much because it was in English mm. and because it was a continuation of what I had started and had never been able to, to do mm. during all these years. But for me, it was... And your autobiography, My Life Come Back, was published in 2005 and received a special presentation at the Dorchester Hotel in London in 2008, attended by the Greek consul to London. Yes. That must have been a very proud moment. It was amazing because the, the, the book was written in Greek and uh, in spite of that, it was... Uh, it, it was a big event they even played the Greek hymn. And I was terribly touched by that and by the way they they even wanted to, to buy the book. And, and I, I was just writing uh, wishes in English and gave the book to them. And did writing come easily to you, writing the I, play? I wrote it in 21 days. Yeah. <laughs> so it all came yeah, out very right. fast. Like that. It's, I am like that. Mm. I can't sort of wait and see and think. And I'm very spontaneous and mm. very mm, energetic. And uh, no, it, energetic is not really the word. Mm. It comes from a passion. Passion, yes, feeling. It's, energetic is not really mm. good enough. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Yes. Well, and after translating so many plays, it was nice to produce your own. Yes, I, I worked very hardly, very hard. My my joy was work, mm. so I, I never complained about that. It was uh, what kept me and what uh, made me dream, and uh, the fact that I was so near those those wonderful writers because when you translate of course you have to do with the, the writer himself so I was in contact with uh, yes all great uh, O'Neill with mm. Strindberg and, you know it was yeah. what a life so how did you find the time for your family yeah um, I've often asked my children and they said that, yes, we missed you terribly because obviously you had to be in the theater. But when I was with my children, I was so terribly um, close to them and to the point of uh, what we had to go through together and uh, uh, that they... So when you were there for them, you were really Yes, I was... Mm. There, with my whole yes. being, and we have a wonderful relation. Yes. They're great friends of mine because I had them when I was terribly young. Yes. So the difference is not terrible. They no. don't feel that they have an old mother. No. Well. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, well, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, um, we're a very happy ha a family. Yes. And do you feel proud that two of your daughters have followed in your footsteps? Oh, I'm very proud and... Well, I'm never proud as a mother because mm. I don't feel that uh, I own them. Mm. Mm. I'm proud for them yes. and for their happiness and for their creative uh, characters yes. Yes. and for the wonderful life that um, they decided to to follow after mine yes. because obviously if yes. they uh, theater we, yes. we only spoke about theater with Alecos mm. mm. <laughs> well I think that's a great tribute to you as a mother because if they if they clearly don't resent you for the time you spent in the theater otherwise they would have run a mile from the theater possibly yeah possibly yes you've received many awards including in 2006 the Kiveli award for your contribution to Greek theater is that one award which means most to you the second one, yeah, uh, it's the award uh, that I received from Nikos Kourkoulos when Nikos was dead, mm. and it was uh, an award named after him. It, it was an right. award named after him, with my name and for my contribution to the theatre, and because Nikos was the best friend I had in mm. uh, the theatre, and uh, his loss meant a lot to me. Uh, obviously, it came as a present after his death. Mm. It was a sort of lifetime achievement award. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and how did he, did he mentor you in some ways or was he just a friend? Um, he meant a lot of things. You've said that your life resembles a fairy tale. Do you consider yourself very lucky? I do. Very lucky. Not only because of the good things that happened to me, but because all the bad things that happened to me turned out to bring me luck. Good fortune. Good fortune. Yes. So, um, yes, I never expected that I would have this kind of life. That must have shaped your philosophy that, in a way, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> Exactly. You've always had to fight in yes. your life. I always fought mm. in my life. Nothing's I still been given do. to you. I still do. Mm. You can't create anything if you don't fight, and mostly if you don't um, have a tough time. I think that it's absolutely necessary to go through tough times in order to be able to create. And that struggle informs your work. Exactly. Yeah. And it makes you a strong person. Mm. You have to bear yes. things. Life is not a bed of roses. Yes. And uh, thank God for that, yes. because what a bore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you last acted on stage, I believe, in 2010. So for you, this has been a decade of watching theatre rather than performing it. What have been the highlights for you? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, I, I want to say that um, now that I don't act anymore, yes. um, I still love theatre uh, with passion. Mm. But the reason I love theatre with passion is when I see an actor performing uh, in a way that he can take me into this world of our own that only actors share. We have the same language, we have the same dream of life. And uh, of course, um, I don't enjoy uh, many performances anymore. I'm quite critical inside me, I don't say, you know. <laughs> but. Um, Critical of the, of the actors or the overall productions? Of the productions on the whole. But when I see great actors, like I saw uh, Ray Fiennes in uh, Richard III, I, I collapsed. Um, I've seen um, uh, Ian McKellen in Richard III. My God. Uh, I've seen um, Redgrave in so many plays. 
In fact, uh, she played Arcadina, which I played in Greece with the Frank Hauser. Mm -hmm. And uh, she played it in a marvelous way. And I was furious with myself for not having thought ab about playing it the way yes. she did. Anyway, uh, actors have, they are the only people on this earth that can make me dream and can really make me a happy person. And I'm so grateful and thankful to this wonderful city and to these wonderful people who are such great artists. And I feel that somehow I am in their family.